Rub up your engines! Here we go, a little change of pace. 2022 Honda ADV, kind of moped motorcycle. Now it's more of a moped because it doesn't have gears in it. Anyone can drive it. These are just both brakes. That's an emergency brake that he's got to set up so it doesn't roll. And this is the other brake. There's two brakes. There's no clutch. Now he's put 3,000 miles on it his first year. He's getting old, he's got arthritis, doesn't have to mess with the clutch. And he can drive it on this Harbor Freight ramps to the back of his mobile home. So he can take it wherever he wants. It weighs about 300 pounds. Now, Henry Ford always said in the beginning, you can get any car or color you want, as long as it's black. Well, this only comes in red, but it looks good in red, right? Now, of course, it's a Honda. With destination charges and everything, that was five grand. There was no destination charge on my 1300 Yamaha, which I paid three grand for, which has about five times the horsepower, but that's another story. He gets 100 miles a gallon. Look, he's my age, so 300 pounds is enough to pick up when it falls over, right? When mine fell over, we had to get a strap and a chain and put a hook on my wife's matrix and she gradually moved it while I held it while it picked itself up. This thing, you can get back up again without too much problem. Now, as you can see, it's got ABS. So it's got any like brakes and that's a big deal on a motorcycle. Now the back is just drum brakes. But if you know anything about motorcycles, it's about 99% of the braking is the front brake. A lot of guys never even use the back brake. It's the front brake that does all the braking. And since it's got ABS, you're not gonna lock it up and go skidding off, which is a good thing. Now it cruises all day long in 50, so it's funny. So once you get up to 60, it kind of struggles. As we look under my John Deere lawnmower here, check it out, it's got 22 horsepower. But then again, it only goes like 10 miles an hour, so it's all relative, right? And all that talk makes me wonder about that crazy Canadian who was driving across Canada and is riding a lawnmower. I never found out anymore. He got so many hundreds of miles, nobody talked about it again. Did he make it? Did he not? Well, I checked it out, but unfortunately, he only got 3,339 miles. He made it to Thunder Bay, Ontario, and found out he got cancer and he had to stop. So that's one heck of a way to have to stop your trip. Now, this bike rides pretty good for a light bike. And strangely enough, the owner, as he just said, had butt cancer. So he wants a smooth riding machine. That's one of the reasons he got it. <laughs> You can see it's got a good suspension system with the external tanks, one on each side, have a lot of inches of travel, so it actually is a pretty smooth riding vehicle. If you want somebody to sit on the back, but they better not be extra sized people because that will double the weight of the vehicle. If they weigh more than 300 pounds, they weigh more than the vehicle does. I gotta say, it sure is a sharp looking bike, and since everybody's nuts about these things in the Philippines, you can get all kinds of add-ons. For instance, he wanted the mirrors to get him a better view, so he put these little extensions on it. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. He put this Corbin seat on, but if you notice something, look, Corbin, there's no dot on the eye, but when you open it up, there's a dot on the eye, but both the Corbin and the American flag is upside down. What did they think? It opened the other way? <laughs> Come on now, people, have some common sense. Now, this is a Honda motorcycle. It is liquid cooled. This thing is going to last a really, really, really long time. You don't have to worry about it overheating like air-cooled motorcycles because they don't get enough air when they're just sitting there. You can idle this all day long with no problems at all. Of course, unlike the old mopeds when I was young, most of them were all two-strokers. Ring, ding, ding, ring, ding, ding. Smoke's flying out of them, right? These things don't pollute. They're four-stroke motors that are liquid-cooled. So not only are they quiet, but they don't pollute. So. At 100 miles a gallon, it's a lot of fun for zooming around in. If you've got the balls to be riding this little thing around, look it up at those 18 wheelers. He likes riding the mainly around Rhode Island, like I say, puts on the back of his traveler, goes to Texas, Florida, whatever, and then he can ride it all over the place. They are perfect for doing that. You don't want to be on one of these on a highway where everybody's doing 80 miles an hour, unless you got some kind of death wish. You know? I don't even like driving my big 1300. I'm faster than everybody and it's big enough people are going to see it. But on the East Coast, people drive like maniacs. They don't look for motorcycles. And that might be one of the reasons they only offer this thing in red. You can see it a lot easier, right? That's probably not a bad idea. It is a classic motorcycle. It's got a regular side stand, but it's also got a center stand. So in the event you get one of those horrendous flat tires, well, you'll be able to do something about it. And as you can see, you don't have to worry about a chain drive. Motor, transmission, everything's built into the back and it drives it 
You don't have to worry about a chain. Like I say, it's quiet. These Honda motors are very quiet, and being four-stroke, they're even quieter. One of the reasons two-stroke motorcycles are so loud is because they rev higher, they don't have oil lubricated, they don't have water lubricated, and even a four-stroke air-cooled motorcycle, the air is cooling it, doesn't have the water insulation, they're a lot louder. These are really quiet. Your neighbors won't be screaming at you. So when you rev it up, you're not gonna be frightening anyone. That can be good and that can be bad, but you shouldn't be frightening people on one of these anyway. <laughs> so away we go. Now that's a whole lot of fun, I gotta say. It is a lot of fun. Riding that thing around is a lot of smiles. Not something you're gonna take on the highway with 18 wheelers, granted. But it's a Honda, their motor's gonna last forever. It's not like those old two-stroke ones that the carburetors are always clogging up, the engines are blowing up. This thing is so under-geared, it'll probably last 100 years. I can't see anything wrong with it, other than it falling down and crashing into things. He took it off road and broke this. <laughs> and put it back on, so, you know. I can see these things lasting basically forever. And they'll show a reserve shocks, Hey, did you get old, get arthritis? Like the owner just said, how many more years of riding do I have? He downscaled to this? Well, I'll tell you, in a couple of weeks, I'll show you an even different downsizing. Kind of an upsize, but actually it's a downsize in terms of the skill you need, as Polaris is giving me one of their three wheel jobs for a couple of weeks that I'm gonna show. And that has an actual steering wheel, and this, technically is a motorcycle, so we had to get a motorcycle license for it. The Polaris is technically an auto car, so you only need a car driver's license to drive it. Steering wheel, got two seats, seat belts. Now, a lot of people say, how come they don't have seat belts on motorcycles? I'll tell you why, because motorcycles fall over. They have two wheels. If it falls over and you're belted to the machine, it's gonna tear your leg and your arm off, right? If you know anything about motorcycles, if you have to get in a motorcycle wreck, what you wanna do is dump the motorcycle and stand on the side of it and hope you don't hit anything. Or if something really coming in the way, you jump off the thing. You do not want to be tied down to a two-wheeled vehicle. That's just too dangerous. Four wheels, you're enclosed, fine. But you're out in the open with two wheels, something bad happens. You want to be able to get off. You don't want to be riding with it sliding down a road on top of your leg or arm or maybe your head. So that's why motorcycles don't have seat belts. But I gotta say, this thing, Hey, it was a lot of fun. And if you remember, about 20 years ago, I made a video for CBS on this guy's moped shop. I crashed the moped and I said, I'll never get on another one of these darn things. Well, this one changes my mind. It's well made. A little motorcycle that you just put your feet down on the bottom instead of having to put them on packs. More comfortable and hey, it's a Honda. You know these things are gonna last forever. You want something like this? This would be the one I'd get because Unlike the old mopeds, this is a Honda. It's well made. They'll keep their resale value, I can just about guarantee you. There's so many baby boomers like me that are getting older that there'll always be a market for something like this as long as you don't crash it and break it into a thousand pieces. But realize this, the thing doesn't go super fast. So if you do crash it, it may crash you, but the bike will probably be okay. The plastic parts can be replaced, but the motor and everything's made out of metal. It'll probably be perfectly fine <laughs> for the next owner. <laughs> and here's some bonus questions and answers. Steve Platt says, <clears throat> should I put an oil separator on my engine? I got a 2021 Ram. 5.7 Hemi. I was wondering if you recommend using an oil separator on a truck. I just heard, learned about oil separators. The truck has 46,000 miles. Don't waste your money. The Hemis don't have problems with the carbon buildup from that stuff. Don't waste your money. That oil separator doesn't need one. Now, let's say you had a really old Dodge truck, like a 90 or something, and it was burning oil like mad, throwing oil. Yeah, you'd put it on that. But your engine's still in good shape, and that's not a problem that those engines have. Those Hemis are just old fashioned push rod engines. They're an older design that they don't have the problem with the carbon buildup like the Volkswagens, a lot of modern cars do. So I wouldn't even worry about it on that. I just change the oil every 5,000 miles with full synthetic oil, make sure it stays clean and take care of the vehicle. I wouldn't put an oil separate on it. It'd be a waste of money. You really don't need to. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.